Over a year ago I took a look at Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron for the Nintendo DS. It was a fun little game which I ended up enjoying a lot more than I was expecting. It didn't play like the console versions, but they made it work despite the DS's limited power. As I have recently brought a PSP, it made me curious to whether or not the PSP version of the game was also any good. I really like Battlefront 1 and 2, and with the new Battlefront not coming to at least 2015, I needed something to fill the gap. The PSP version of Elite Squadron was developed by Rebellion Studios, who have worked on many different PSP games. They are now most famously known as the people behind the Sniper Elite series. Now, I have not played any other PSP Battlefront games, so I will be reviewing this game from the point of view of, does Battlefront work well on the PSP, even though Elite Squadron was the third and final game to be released for the system. So, does Elite Squadron on the PSP succeed as a spin-off to the Battlefront games, or does it make the wait for the new Battlefront even more painful? Let's check it out. The story takes place from the Clone Wars to beyond the destruction of the second Death Star. You play as a clone trooper called X2, who has a brother in the clone army as well, who is brilliantly named X1. The story is broken into three acts. The first is about X1 and X2 fighting side by side in the Clone Wars, the second is what happens to the two brothers during the Emperor's rule, and the third is the conclusion that takes place after the Empire has been destroyed. As with the DS version, the story is actually good. It manages to tie in every major battle in the films without feeling too forced. It's also nice to see how the film events such as Order 66 affected smaller characters in the universe. The story itself is good, but the presentation is weak and lets it down. There are very few in-game cutscenes, so instead there are scenes from the films edited together with X2 talking over the top of them. They are done in a similar style as the story of Battlefront 2, but using film footage instead, which now comes across as lazy. When you're seeing footage from the films, it's hard to care about the story the game is trying to tell, as you know the real context for all the scenes you're being shown. They are also quite short, so the story doesn't get fleshed out, things just seem to happen. I praised the story for the DS version, but weirdly enough there is a lot less dialogue in the PSP version, which makes it less interesting. Also, since I reviewed the DS version, the expanded universe is no longer canon, which makes Act 3 of the story now feel a bit like a childish fantasy than anything good. The gameplay is taken from the original PS2 Battlefront games. Let's start with the first thing you will notice that has changed, and that's the controls. As you only have one analog stick they had to compensate, so pressing up and down moves you forwards and backwards, but pressing left to right turns the camera. This means that you can't manually aim up and down, and if you want to turn around because someone is shooting you in the back, you have to stop moving completely and turn your character 180 degrees. The movement feels very clunky, as the tank controls do not suit the fast-paced gameplay. There is a lock-on that you use by pressing the R button, which means you can shoot at enemies without too much difficulty, though. Eventually, you do get used to the controls, mostly thanks to the fact that even the PS2 games didn't have that tight gameplay mechanics. Battlefront has never been about being precise and skillful with your shots, so even with the worst controls, the game doesn't really suffer as much as you would think. The only time I feel the controls bring the game down is any time you're shooting enemies in an enclosed area. Fights instantly become messy and all over the place when you're shooting at enemies that are close by, and this isn't helped by the camera freaking out constantly. If you try this game out and decide it's bad due to the controls, I can't blame you, but if you're willing to take the time to get used to them, they're good enough for a Battlefront game. When I started up the game, I naturally decided to play through the campaign first, which turned out to be a mistake. During the first few missions, I both had to deal with getting used to the controls, and also being disappointed by the story. If you ignore those two problems though, the campaign still isn't fun to play. There is a mission for each of the 12 planets that you can fight on in the game, as well as a tutorial mission. Instead of taking part in the main battle, you are told exactly what to do and where to go at all times. There's always an objective marker on screen, and you spend the whole campaign just following it. It becomes boring very quickly, especially as you don't get a real sense that you're actually involved in the battle that's going on around you. It completely goes against what makes Battlefront fun in the first place, and it doesn't pull off having a campaign like Battlefront 2 did. It also doesn't help that the campaign is only 4 hours long, and features some very messy boss fights. The poor story presentation and the follow the objective marker design of the campaign means that this game would have benefited without this mode being included, as it made my first few hours of the game both annoying and dull. Both Galactic Conquest and Instant Action have you take part in more traditional Battlefront, well, battles. 
There have been a lot of changes since Battlefront 2, with the biggest being that every battle now has a land battle going on at the same time as a space battle. At any time when you're fighting people on land, you can choose to jump in a spaceship, fly directly upwards and transition to the space battle that is happening. The way that you win battles has also been changed to accommodate for having two battles occurring at the same time. The goal is to be the first team that reaches a thousand points, with everything you do against the other team scoring you points. If you kill someone you get a point, blowing up a ship gets you 3 points, and capturing command posts can get you 20. This means that you have the freedom to win in any way you want. If you want to focus on the space battle and score points by dogfighting and shooting at core components on your main enemy ships, you can. If you want to stay on the ground, you can fight the other team for command posts. There is also one command post on each map that has an ion cannon. Once you have captured the ion cannon for long enough, you can use it to destroy the shield of the enemy's main ship, helping out the space battle. The large amount of choice is impressive, and it helps each game feel different. However, having this amount of choice introduces a new problem. Most of what you do doesn't matter. You are only one soldier who can be at one place at one time, so who wins doesn't really come down to what you do in your actions. It's possible to do horribly, get very little kills and die all the time, but still win in the end thanks to your AI teammates. It doesn't ruin battles, but it can ruin any tension about winning or not. I am only playing the game in single player, so perhaps in multiplayer having the choice works a lot better, but you're going to have trouble finding people to play a 5 year old PSP game, just like I did. The main mode I found myself playing was Galactic Conquest. The goal of Galactic Conquest is to take over as many planets as possible to conquer the galaxy. There have been some additions to make it more complex than the Galactic Conquest from Battlefront 2. Instead of having different fleets, players now have troops stationed on each planet that they own. Each player's turn is split into three different phases. The first is the purchase phase, where you get to buy general upgrades or buy more troops on a planet. The second phase is movement, where you can choose to move troops to a different planet to try and take it over. When attacking a planet, you can choose how many troops you want to move, but you always have to have 10 troops left on each planet you own. The last phase is Reinforce, which gives you a chance to move troops to planets that you think are going to be attacked during the enemy's turn. The ultimate goal is to invade the enemy's home planet, which you do by invading other planets along the way, as the more planets you own, the more income you receive each round to buy troops and upgrades. While there are much deeper strategy games on the PC, the level of depth you get is just right for the PSP. You have to be smart with how you spend your money and deploy the troops you have, and it's easy to get sucked into it. There are six different scenarios to play through, three of them based on the Clone Wars and the other three based on the Galactic Civil War. How long it will take you to beat all six depends on how you play. Whenever someone attacks a planet, you are given the option to either play the battle yourself or to use Auto Resolve. Auto Resolve gives you an outcome based on how many troops each side has and what upgrades each side has purchased. I found myself using Auto Resolve about two thirds of the time, as fighting in all of the battles is silly when you're guaranteed victory for some of them, but fighting in none of them turns Galactic Conquest into a weak strategy game instead of a cool twist on the Battlefront formula. This means that one game of Galactic Conquest could take you an hour or so, but it also could only take you 10 minutes, depending on how many battles you skip. For me, after the awful campaign, Galactic Conquest was the saving grace of this game, and the mode that makes the most sense for a PSP Battlefront title. My time playing Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron was very mixed. The controls took longer than expected to get used to, and even then they're not that good. The campaign felt like a waste of time, and without being able to play multiplayer, I was ready to give up on this game. However, I was won around by how ambitious the title is. It expands on everything that Battlefront 2 did, and if it was released on consoles, removing all the issues that were caused by the limitations of the PSP, it would be a worthy Battlefront 3. My score is 7.0 out of 10. It's too flawed to be great, but if you want to play some more Battlefront, it's a game you can certainly have fun with.